Good morning, YouTube friends. Well, it's awful cold here. If you see me wearing the same sweater over and over and over again, it's not because I'm filming all of these in the same day. It's because I wear this sweater a lot. <laughs> it's it's just, uh, it's old and cozy. Uh, it's long and I like it. I wear different things underneath, but I wear this sweater a lot of days. I took this sweater to my mother's house one year, years ago, and accidentally left it in the dresser drawer in her guest room. And it stayed there for, I think, over a year. I didn't know what happened to it. And then I found it when I went up there to visit again. I'm going to go visit my mother again uh, sometime in February, I think. Just not sure when yet. I want to make sure that the roads are not icy or snowy when I go. Well, I'm in the kitchen doing what I do every morning about 1030. I'm, I've started making myself a pot of hot, creamy, sweet tea on these cold mornings when I'm working in my studio. Let me show you what I'm doing with that. Here's my pot. This is a, a tea kettle that, um, I don't even have that turned on. I don't have either one of them turned on. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, so this was given to me by uh, one of my dear blog friends, Gretchen. Oh, I don't know, five, no, it's been more like seven years ago. It has been through the ringer. Um, I should post a picture of a painting I did about a tea kettle, bless its heart. Um, and then I heat up my milk back here in the separate um, little pot. Here's my teapot. I made this cozy, and I like this cozy, but I hate the yarn. I find that color of variegated yarn just not very appealing. I might have, I'm really thinking of making new tea cozies. That, that's a different one. Got a little cup and saucer here. I love this pattern a lot. I am very fond of this tea, Yorkshire Gold. This um, this tea brews so quickly and it makes good strong pot. You could use these bags over and over, I think. Uh, maybe the caffeine is stripped out of them after one use, but I keep them in this little thing, but I might use these later in the day. I like to use them for this first pot. This first pot has to be good. I've also I've also got these. I think I've mentioned these before, but I think I prefer the Yorkshire to the Malty Biscuit. Maybe you should try Malty Biscuit again this morning. Give it another chance. Boy, I sure do like that Yorkshire. Plus, I can get it locally. I am painting lighthouses, North Carolina lighthouses. I'm painting cards and painting some bigger pieces of them. Um, and I might share some of those photos here. I want to work on those till I get a set of like five lighthouses. Um, and then get prints made of those and sell them in sets of, you know, one card for each lighthouse. Because we have some pretty cool lighthouses. I love the stripiness, the black and white pattern on them. Um, they're really beautiful in North Carolina. So I'll share some of those. I've been fighting my spinning wheel, my, my antique spinning wheel. My other spinning wheel is great. We never fight. But <laughs> I should name these. I should name the old ones something like Matilda. I should name them after family members. That's a thought. Anyway, the old wheel, I do fight with it. There was a lady in one of my spinning wheel groups um, I don't think it was the antique group. She was talking about a Kromsky wheel that she bought. I forget what it's called. But she said she was scared of her spinning wheel for years. And she's finally just started trying to get back into it. And when she said that, I thought, what a bold admission that was. <laughs> to admit that you're scared of your spinning wheel. But they can be terrifying because they... It's, it's like having a dog with its own opinions that, that uh, you don't walk the dog, the dog walks you. It's a little bit like the spinning wheel is spinning you and you're not spinning it. Um, it's in charge. and uh, But you don't want to fight with your spinning wheel or you could do it some harm. So I understand how she feels. I got, I got that antique wheel so good. It was so smooth two days ago. And then yesterday I sat down to spin and it was doing its wonky business all over again. I just don't know. I think the problem is user error and I don't know enough about spinning wheels. <laughs> to keep it in shape. Anyway, uh, so I'm working on spinning and, and painting and drinking tea and not much else. I, I hate the hot weather and I say that I long for winter, but I think I really long for December, November, but January is rough. 
And this house is cold. It's never really toasty warm. Some of you have old houses like that. So anyway, oh, the milk is steamy. The water's about to boil, so I have to go, but I'll get back to you. Well, now I can sit in my studio with a nice candle. This is that evergreen candle um, that I bought at Walmart. And it actually smells really good and has lasted for probably two months. I don't burn it every day, but I've been very pleased with that candle and it was not expensive. Um, so I've got my pot and my cup. And this will probably give me about five cups of, um, of tea, at least. It's just so wonderful. So let me show you these um, lighthouse pictures I've been talking about. When I went to Ocracoke about two years ago, maybe I'll post some pictures now of my trip to Ocracoke with my friend Mary. We had such a delightful time. Maybe I did a, uh, if I did a video of that, I don't think I was doing YouTube yet, so I don't know that I have any video, but I'll, sh I'll share some pictures. Ocracoke is delightful, especially if you go a little off-season, I think. It's very developed now, um, not with huge buildings or condos or anything like that, but it's a small village and not a lot of space. Um, so I took some photographs, and I'll share those now of the Ocracoke Lighthouse. It's a very old lighthouse, and I haven't looked up details about these um, these lighthouses yet. So I'm not sure exactly how old. Maybe I'll put some notes here. And I painted a couple of paintings, um, little, just little pieces of that lighthouse and left one of them there for uh, the lady whose home we were staying in. I took the photographs off of her back deck um, in the twilight. Anyway, they were beautiful. So I painted a little bit of that. And then I've recently painted a new one of Ochre Coke. So here's the new one. And then I started painting the Cape Lookout Lighthouse because that was one that we saw when we went on our beach vacation as an extended family hmm, almost two years ago. Is that right? I think so. Anyway, I think that was the summer of 2020. Yes. And... And it's a really pretty um, checkerboard diamond pattern. So I did one of that that a lady asked for. That was a card. And then now I've done a larger one of Cape Lookout. And I'll probably do some more cards of that. The cards are very time consuming. I don't know that I can sell them for $5 each. <laughs> they take a couple of hours to paint. Um, and then I decided to move on to the Bodie Island Lighthouse, which has horizontal stripes. Very fun, a little bit easier than that diamond pattern. And I've done now a couple of that. So here they are. Anyway, I'm enjoying this and um, I'll probably paint several at least of each lighthouse until I find one where I like the lighthouse, but more importantly, where I like the sky. I don't know how much I like those bright pink colors. They are realistic. You can see photographs of skies that look just like that, but they kind of dominate the painting um, a bit. So I don't know what I think about that. All right, well, that's it for painting right now. I'm really not painting anything else that I can think of, except for I recently did this octopus. Here he is. I think I may have talked about him before. So we do some more spinning and plying. Yes, maybe I'll call that spinning wheel over there Matilda. I don't know why, but that seems like kind of a mean name. I think I'll call this one Nancy. 
Nancy is a very sweet name. Only nice people are called Nancy. All the Nancys I've known are very sweet people. So when I'm doing Nancy today, I'm <laughs> spinning on Nancy and not Matilda. I may try Matilda later. And every now and then, I can just hop. It is sunny today. Well, spinning friends, to end this video today, I thought I would share a new technique that I haven't ever done before. I do that a lot, don't I? This is going to be, um, what do they call this? Oh, they call it a paperback plying, but I thought it might do better with a hardback book, so I'll call it hardback plying. Um, what you do is you find yourself a book and it doesn't, I think, matter how thick the book is so long as it's big from here to here, okay, the, this distance. Um, and then you need something, in, you can put a pencil in here or a knitting needle. I thought something flat would work better. Uh, people also use um, like a popsicle stick, but you want it to be tall enough. Now, the point is that the book is going to function like your hand normally would if you did a bracelet ply. And so instead of your hand with your middle finger here that gets so tired and bent over and her, one lady said on Facebook that her middle finger turned blue from doing bracelet plying. Um, so we don't want that. Plus, if I want to get up and, well, not answer the phone because the phone is right there. I'm looking at the phone. But if I need to get up and do something, then I can just put this down and not be tied to my spinning wheel. Now, I have put, I'm going to turn the camera down. Um, and show you what's going on. Now here is uh, my bobbin. It's, it's fairly full. I think I'm ready to stop with this. This is on Matilda. Remember, I decided to name her Matilda. For some reason, that just seems to work. Um, I think that was an, an, a family member's name from years and years ago. Anyway, I used to put a knitting needle through here, and I used to use this. This is the old um, a post for the distaff. Um, but the distaff is missing, but it does still have a hole right here. And I used to put a knitting needle here and put a toilet paper roll here. And I used to remove, because I only had one bobbin on this antique spinning wheel, I would use this toilet paper roll as an other bobbin. You can see that on old footage that I do. But um, I don't really want to use toilet paper rolls anymore. Um, so I think I need to take off. Loosen my tension. Take off my drive band. Yeah, that'll make it go better. Uh, if I held it... Okay, so people keep on saying that it's very important to pull your singles off the bobbin this way instead of pulling it off the end of the bobbin this way. Um, I'm still not convinced of that. If you hear noises, it's just the cat. <laughs> Okay, I went back and looked at this website. It's on Rosemary, Rosemary Knits and, um, and figured out what she was doing. So it's really almost more like the hand's not this way. The hand is kind of this way, okay? And um, you go on one side and grab it and go this way and grab it. And what this has the effect of doing is making a very long loop. The loop goes from here all the way around and to here. But it's kind of, it's not knotted together, but it is intertwined um, in a way that keeps it intact, even when you take it off and take the book out and um, such. So this may take me a while. I really do wish I had a shorter ruler. A six inch ruler would be too short. Um, I may have to find something else to use. This is going to take me a while because this is a long bobbin, a full bobbin. But I'll come back and show you when I've got more of this on here. And it will be pretty full and bulky. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Let me show you what it looks like on this side. Same as on the other. Eventually it'll fill all this in and it'll just be a big bulk. Um, and it looks like this 
on the top. Okay. Okie dokie. Well, here it is. Isn't that interesting? Here's the end. It came last and here is the end. I stuck it in the book so it wouldn't get lost anywhere. I didn't put a knot in it and I probably should have. Okay, so now, now I think I'm supposed to slide it off the book first. But it's, you know, maybe this is why you're supposed to use a paperback. <laughs> because it's more mobile. Ugh, I'm going to get it off here, though. This is my exercise for the day. <laughs> oh, and this is so twisty. <laughs> okay, it's very twisty. Look how twisty it is. It's, it feels like, it feels like noodles that you need to cook. <laughs> it's that twisty. It's quite twisty. All right. Um, I did get a finger through the through the middle of it. Okay. So if you were um, if this were on your on your wrist, then that's where your wrist would go. That's where the bracelet is. Um, I think then you can take this out. This is not twisted very well at all. So I'm gonna have to find a good twisty spot and put a knot in it. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna be very brave and try to apply this on Matilda back onto, uh, this is one reason to use um, back onto my bobbin. I should say, I'm sorry when I stop in mid-sentence, that's a bad habit of mine. Um, but that's one reason to use this kind of plying. Um, if you have a spinning wheel and you only have one bobbin, you have to have something else to put your, um, your singles on so that you can ply them back onto that one bobbin. Robin. So, um, boy, I wonder how this is going to go. I think I'll put it on a knitting needle. I am really pondering. Let me see. Let me think about this. Well, I've started my plying. I'll have to say this is going to be difficult. This is so over twisted. It's, it looks more like something you could scrub yourself with in the bathtub. Um, and, um, I, you know, I'm plying in the opposite direction, so some of that twist will be taken care of. But this is going to be very twisty yarn, I think. Um, although, I did read about the true Andean plying in the Peruvian mountains. And those women do very over-twisted yarn because it makes it sturdy. My difficulty is in pulling the center pull out of the middle. This is just a mess. Um, I do have a nice clear hole in the middle, okay? And I can take that off and put it onto, um, I have a nice big size 19 knitting needle that I can stick here in the distaff hole and I can leave this resting here if I need to, um, which is nice. And I think I'll be able to get it plied. It'll just be a little time consuming because I have to stop and pull this out. It is coming. It's just the over twisting is a mess. And that's a result of my singles. It's all my fault. I just put too much twist into them when I spun them. But I'm having fun. I'm learning new things. So if you want to try the paperback or hardback applying method, um, you might get a better result than this, hopefully. But um, we're going to keep at it. All right.